Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of MWISE here in our nation's capital. I am your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and analyst, Rob Streche. We're joined by Eric Dorr. He is the VP of Engineering for Cloud Security at Google Cloud. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Eric. I'm very excited to be here. So before, before the cameras were rolling, we were talking about integra the integration and how it's going. Mm -hmm. And you said this is really the first time that, you, that we're sort of seeing evidence of these two companies coming together. Mm -hmm. to unpack that a little bit for our viewers. Yeah, I think I, I, we were talking in the context of one of the, the product announcements we made yesterday, which was uh, we announced a thing we called Applied Threat Intelligence, which is part of Chronicle, and really, uh, there's a couple of things that are really powerful about this. The first is that, uh, you know, the, the kind of the old way to do security is you'd have a team of people that are researching threats and threat actors. You have a team of people who are operating your security controls. People who are researching would then painstakingly figure out how to go track or defend. And you know, that's like the speed of 2010, not the speed of 2023 or 2024 or 25. And so, Applied Threat Intel is taking everything Mandiant knows about threat actors, everything Google knows about threat actors from defending you know, billions of Chrome users, bil you know, billions of Gmail users, and then programmatically integrating that into our Chronicle security operations platform so that it's automatically finding bad behavior and even the extreme breach where we might have a Mandiant incident responder at a company, you know, finding something new and novel today, we put that into our system and in under 30 minutes that'll be matching if there's any of that behavior in your, uh, in your ecosystem. And that kind of speed, that's what it takes in today's world, but, but I'd say it's not the norm. And so we're really excited about that and how that kind of takes all the pieces of Google and Mandiant and brings it together into something that's really new and solves a real problem that security organizations have. Yeah, I mean, that totally makes sense to me and to Rebecca, and that makes sense to allow you to go wider and go to not as sophisticated customers. Is that kind of the intent of bringing Mandiant and Google and all of it together? Yeah, it's certainly a piece of it. I mean, what I'd say is, uh, you know, a, a lot of parts of the world aren't satisfied with their existing security setup. And you've got an, you know, increasing, increasingly hostile geopolitical landscape, you know, proliferation of cyber crime. You know, it's a tough world to defend against. And so, uh, we're certainly hoping to help a lot of our customers do a lot better. So how are these updates going to benefit these customers? As you said, it's, it's a big bad world out there and, it, and it's only getting harder to defend against these threats. Yeah, I, you know, in the context of, uh, we've obviously been talking a lot about AI and generative AI you know, over the last year, and, and in the context of that, we, we tried to frame what we see are the core problems in cybersecurity and, and you know, came up with our own way of talking about it. We talked about toil, talent, uh, and threats, right? And, because it's alliterative and it's fun. <laughs> but, um, the, uh, and, and, and you basically look at it and say, it, mostly I'd zoom into kind of the toil and the talent and say, the average security job sucks. And what we hear from a lot of people is, they might love the mission, but they hate their job. And why? Because their job has a tremendous amount of toil. You know, manual actions, copy and paste, wrote actions over and over. And if you can take some of that out, if you can make it so the human is doing things that humans are good at, and let the computers do the things that they're good at, the rote tasks, you know, the automated tasks, um, there's a big benefit. And the other piece is around talent. We, I mean, it's been well publicized. There's, you know, depending on who you, you trust, hundreds of thousands or millions of open cybersecurity jobs. We're just not filling those. And so, how can we take the people who are in those jobs and make them more productive? How can we make the people that are getting in and get them to ramp up more quickly and be more productive? There's just a tremendous opportunity there. And gener generative AI is a piece of that puzzle. I mean, there's other pieces of the puzzle as well. Yeah, we actually talked with Kevin a little bit about that this morning yeah. and a couple others as well. But uh, tell us what's new with uh, Chronicle Security Operations. Uh, I think you made some announcements around yeah. that. Yeah. The, the, so there are a couple of things I'd highlight. You know, I already mentioned one of them, which is this applied threat intel, this notion that it's baked in, it's got 
you know, the broadest and deepest visibility of bad threats and what threat actors are doing that anybody has between the optics that Google has and what Mandiant sees from the front lines of, you know, the worst, worst of breaches and making that all automated and not requiring, you know, a separate team to go figure stuff out at the speed of, of slow humans. Um, the second big thing is, we announced that we brought this together into a unified, what we call modern security operations platform. And so some of this is the culmination of a prior acquisition we made of a company called Simplify, which does orchestration and response. Many of the Mandiant software components have now been brought together into a coherent platform. That includes things like our attack surface, uh, attack surface management, which which is an, in, you know, this is like the outside in view of right. what's happening, what a bad guy can see of your infrastructure, and how that can be brought in context as you are responding to an event, and all that comes together in a way that's really meaningful. Of course, Duet AI and all the great things we're doing with AI, which we announced a lot of that at Next a few weeks ago, but there's yeah, kind of I was going to bring that up. Yeah, 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 we'll that, get there, we'll get yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> um, but then the final thing I'd say is some amazing partnerships, and, and just a quick note on that, you know, Sentinel One and Corelight are two partnerships we announced kind of expanding what we're doing with those folks. And this is something that's been, I'll say, um, a really beautiful part of coming into Google, I came in uh, a little less than a year and a half ago, which is this really deep-seated understanding that we're all in this together, we're all fighting the same bad actors, and you've got to have really strong partnerships and kind of quote unquote lock shields with them in order for us as an industry to move forward. And so it's really great to see the expansion here with these partners and lots more we're going to do. So how do you get that kind of mindset, that kind of shared faith, shared responsibility mm -hmm. with all of these companies who are all also ostensibly competitors mm -hmm. too? I mean, maybe doing slightly different things. But I mean, what you are talking about sounds pretty inspirational and maybe even aspirational for the rest of the industry. How, why is it? Is it just because it is it is, as you said, a, a really rough geopolitical landscape that, that, that the future just looks so scary that we all need to band together, or is there something else going on about the mindset that's created in cybersecurity? Yeah, I mean, I do think that cybersecurity compared to most in industries, I think does a better job of kind of co-opetition than in maybe than in other cases. Um, I think for Google specifically, you know, Google got serious about helping people with their security problems, you know, four or five years ago. Um, obviously Google's been focused on internal security for a long time. Uh, and, and there's a benefit when you approach a market as a relative newcomer, which is you get to pick where you're going to engage and what problem you're going to focus on, and you don't have any of the innovator's dilemma problem, right? But what I would say is if you look at, if you look broadly at security, uh, our point of view is there's a lot of stuff that's just broken. You know, if you look, let's just, let me pick one example. I don't know of any other market where, the, where your budget today could be, say, twice what it was five years ago, and the outcomes are worse. It's yeah. like buying a car and saying, I bought a car today, it's $10,000, it gets, you know, 50 miles a gallon. Five years later, you buy a car, it's $20,000, and it gets 10 miles a gallon. You'd be outraged as a consumer if that happened. And yet, that's yeah. the norm in cybersecurity for the average CISO and the average organization. We're coming in and saying, look, it doesn't have to be that way. And there's some like-minded partners who are saying we can band together and do stuff together. And you know, we're making progress, I think, but yeah. we have a long way to go as an industry. And like you said, you actually joined from one of those partners, as, as I, I, as I understand you came over from Microsoft and brought some of that. So it's, it's nice to see, because I think Microsoft is on stage in a little bit at one of the keynotes as yep. well. And I think that, that's truly unique. I, I think to this is the ecosystem and that whole ecosystem. It, I, I got to say, that was, has blown me away at how much of an ecosystem play has been at this event. Yeah. But one of the things that goes along with ecosystem is, and when, especially when you're doing integrations and trying to bring things together at the engineering level is, sometimes it becomes complex, and how do you make it simple? So how, how, are, how are you making it simple for the customers to really take advantage of Chronicle and really all of the tooling that Mandian has brought to bear? Yeah, um, as you said, it is a journey, and yeah. it, is, uh, it is sometimes complicated, but again, I'd look at it and say, you know, in, in a past job, 
I was a defender myself trying, you know, running the SOC for Azure and kind of helping stitch together the right tools and the right resources. So I kind of feel like I have a, an emotional understanding <laughs> of what that's like that you know, is, is helpful at times. Um, you know, I'd say a lot of CISOs kind of describe their life as they buy a set of things, a truck comes, dumps a set of Legos on their driveway, and now they might have all the Legos, but they got to put it together, <laughs> right? And how much time do you want to spend putting together things versus doing your job, doing your real job? Certainly what we're trying to do is be very outcome focused. And say, you've got a job to do, you know, the technology is there to accelerate that job, and how can we pull together things so that they just work? Easy to say that. Lots of people say, oh, we're going to make it just work. We're going to do integration. Um, but I think we've been laser focused, particularly on the things we've been building at Google, and then as we've made these acquisitions and take you know, the amazing IP and, and technology and, and, and expertise that we've gotten from these acquisitions, how do you fuse it together into something that's truly unique, but really focused on up-leveling the defender and you know, helping them do their job better, helping them be safer. How do you describe the mood of the average CISO today and, and sort of what you're hearing, the conversations you're having here at MWISE? What, what are sort of the, the dominant themes that are emerging? Yeah, uh, first thought, <laughs> mood of the CISO, grumpy. Okay, <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, mood of the CISO when they talk to us, often hopeful. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, yeah. you know, the, I think that, um, you know, it's a really hard job being a CISO and, you know, there's kind of, it kind of the, the what's the adage about you know the the, the defenders have to win every day and the, the only the have to be right bad actors once. only yeah. have to be right <laughs> once right yeah. well it's kind of a similar thing which is the CISO only has to fail once for it to be pretty bad yeah. right yeah. and so career ending um, so I think it's a really hard job um, I think that more and more as we talk to customers they're seeing uh, that we're coming with a different approach that we're turning upside down some of the kind of conventional wisdom. An example of this is just kind of the founders of Chronicle had a very simple but very profound insight, which is that the way that the industry looks at data for security is broken. Because people look at it as a scarce, expensive thing where you have to pick and choose what data you're going to do, what you're going to keep, how long you're going to keep it. You have whole teams of people in large organizations yeah. who that's what they do. And we said if you turn that upside down and just say, we'll build a solution that can scale with all the data that matters to you, index it quickly, search quickly, it's a different world. And because we built the foundation right, we can do that economically so that people are paying a reasonable amount of money for those capabilities. It changes the game. It sounds small, but it's so fundamental because when you do that, you, you can't be smart about what's happening if you don't actually have all the data. And most organizations can't afford to actually have all the data given the tools they're using. Yeah. So it's a, it's get, you get those basics right, you get the foundation right. It's not that the rest is easy, but the rest is possible. And I'd say reimagining what security can be is possible, uh, which I think that's the hope that I see in some of these conversations when we talk as they are seeing, oh, maybe there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Not to my job being easy, yeah. but you know, to my job being possible maybe. Yeah, yeah. you just don't want it to be a train at the end of the tunnel, yeah, that's that, right. that's, <laughs> of course. But I, I think you brought up a really good point and I, I think uh, what we get a lot when we travel around is how do we, how do the security companies also keep the data secure? And because you're c collecting so much data about these companies and you have, you know, like you said, we had uh, Jeff Reed on earlier about the, the attack surface management. Yep. It's like, that's pretty important information and I would expect that you spend a lot of time thinking about how do we keep this security secure for our customers as well. Yeah, for sure. I think there's two dimensions of that. One is the controls we give customers to protect their data and have their data managed however they want. And, you know, simple example, the data residency that a lot of, of customers who say, I'm in you know, this country and I, I want all the data that to originate in this country to stay in this country. These are the kinds of controls we've been building into across Google Cloud and across our security business and kind of build it from the bottom up so that's everywhere. Um, and I think the other thing then is of course, the work we do to make sure our own infrastructure is super resilient and we have you know, some of the best red teams in the world, some of the best you know, internal security teams and of course, we get to eat our own dog food and use you know, all of the best technology and in many cases, the tech we built for ourselves 
is some of what we're saying, hey, this is, we think, very, very helpful and something that's better than the state of the art, and how can we bring that to customers so that they can take advantage of that. Eric, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It was my pleasure, thanks. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strecce. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of MWISE coming up after this short break.